Well, all right, all right, all right. What's happening, dudes? This is Trent, and today I'm going to talk to you about animating in Photoshop. And this might come in handy if you yourself find yourself, uh, that's redundant, if you find yourself in a situation where you must animate, but you don't know how to animate, because I don't know how to animate, but I figured out a few things, I can share those with you. I'm just going to do kind of an over, overview in time lapse here of, of the process that I had done, that I'd gone through to get all of my keyframes and animate and such, and then we're going to go a little bit more in detail later in the video. So if you want, you can just skip ahead to the, the tips on actually how to do this stuff using Photoshop. So we're going to create our keyframes first, and this just entails our list of moves that the character has in the game. And that's like a wall slide, that's a jump, that's a run. Uh, mostly that's, actually, that's mostly it. There's a beam out animation. Uh, oh, I forgot about the idle. Yeah, you see that all the way over on the left. And so what we're doing is we're just, we've got our character sheet and we're just creating the keyframe poses. And from there, we're gonna use those poses to kind of slice up parts and move parts around to create more poses and fill in the blanks in between. Now I had a rough animation and I started to fill in the parts over top of that original rough animation. Um, but you'll notice that I, I ended up redoing it and you'll notice uh, the technique that I, I, I did to do that uh, in a little bit and I'll address it when it pops up here. Uh, but really this was about getting the type of movement, how extreme uh, does he push his limbs when he runs and things like that. Uh, how how do p parts on his outfit move around his coat how much does it flap behind him you know things like that and how much do his elbows stick out what's his running style and i'm trying to think about those things during this phase now i, I should preface this by saying i i'm not a animator by trade that's not my profession i didn't study animation i don't even particularly like animating i like the results <laughs> i like to see it once it's done and it's coming to life but if you're a concept artist working in games, usually you don't have to do animations or you don't have to think very much about how characters move un unless if you're considering that in the posing of the characters. So for me, I'm trying to find every cheap way that I can to figure out how to animate this character and make him feel alive uh, without actually having any knowledge or experience animating. So how do you do that? Well, you pull up reference and you look at other animations. So I think that for... The initial run that I had in the Aikida game, I used a uh, sprites from Mega Man, possibly. I don't remember which one it was. But then I found these cool animation strips that some professional animators had put together. And I started kind of copy and pasting my components of, of my drawings of my characters from my keyframes over top of them. And then I found a better one. I found one, you'll notice that I kind of switched that background animation guide for the run. And some of you might even recognize this, uh, this particular guide, but it really just breaks down an eight frame run cycle. Now I don't really need to know too much about squash and stretch or the general rules of animation to be able to do an eight frame run cycle for an indie game. Now, especially since I have no intention of like becoming a pro animator. As I said, I like to see the results and I like to make indie games. So it's kind of a necessary evil. Uh, so I trace over those until I feel like I've gotten pretty close. And then what I do is I create a new file and I drop each one of those frames into a layer within that new file. And then I start to actually animate and refine the animation. There's a feature that lets you run through your cycle of frames in Photoshop and I'll, we'll dig into that in a little bit here, but once I, I feel that I have like a flow that's working where the limbs are moving appropriately by each frame, that's when I start to actually add the details and refine the drawings for each frame. All right, whoa, 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 that's a lot of information really fast all at once. Let's break it down, let's go to real time and let's go through the process. Now, the way to do this, the way to create animations in Photoshop is it's sort of a hidden thing, but not really. If you go up here to window, and you scroll down to timeline, it'll pop up the timeline. I just, I had it on, so I just switched it off. Timeline, and then it usually pops up something that looks a little different, and you'll have to go here to this button along the side and drop down uh, and switch it to uh, convert to, yours will say convert to frame timeline. And that's what gives you these frames. Now, each one of these frames is a frame in the animation and it's storing the layer information. So for instance, if I turn this one on, on this frame, it fills that, that shot in, it fills in that frame with the layer that I just switched on. 
So for instance, that'll mess up my animation. So if I hit play here, you'll notice one of those frames is off, it doubles up because I had switched in this frame, I had switched on the wrong frame. And you can tell that it's wrong because it's going, if we go to frame one, you see that down here, this is layer two switches on. Actually, it should be layer one switches on for, for frame one. Frame two, layer two switches on. Frame three, layer three switches on and so forth. Let me just go ahead and double check that all these are, have the according, the appropriate according number associated with that frame. Now when we hit play, it plays through, wait, we've got a doubled up frame. Which frame is that, that is showing two frames? Here we go, it's this one. So that's the second frame. And we have, it should just be frame two is on. And then frame one only has frame one on. And if we hit play, we should have a nice smooth animation. Now we only have eight frames. If we wanted an even smoother animation, we could have 16 frames and break it down uh, in, in that way. But in this case, it's an indie game, so I'm just, I'm just doing, and I'm hand animating this, so I'm just doing the eight frames. Also, we'll notice that when we zoom way out, that looks a lot smoother uh, when the character is very small. The bigger your character sprite is, the more frames of animation you're gonna need to keep it looking smooth. These usually happen very fast though. So for instance, in game, it'll probably run at a slower speed. So if we select all those frames and we go to no delay, it's gonna just run them at full speed as fast as your processor will allow you to do anyway. So that kind of breaks down how to do the frame animations. Uh, just a couple more tips that I wanted to throw your way uh, as we go back into time lapse and, and you're watching me kind of detail out a lot more of my frames. Try to think about how some of the objects are moving. So one of the things that I do is I keep an eye on just one element, like the arm, for example, and I'll cycle through my frames and I try to just focus on is that one arm working in a consistent flow that loops? And if that one arm feels like one frame it jostles too far forward or something like that, then I'll just focus on that one arm to move it back. And then you kind of go through your whole piece making these little adjustments. Now I know if you're a professional animator, none of this is like necessarily the pro way to do it. This is the the ghetto way that I taught myself how to animate in order to make indie games. And it's just the bare bones of things that I know and tricks that I know to get some basic animation going. So here we have a polish pass on all of our frames. For the most part, it works. Um, there are a couple of things I could probably improve, but when we look at it about how small it's gonna be in game, that's not too bad, it's not too shabby. I think it's good enough to uh, just double check everything here. We might have to get rid of our ground line that we put in, but uh, and I'm checking some different speeds that we're running it at to make sure that it's it's flowing really well. And uh, let's let's pop it into the game and see how this looks in game. So I drop it into Game Maker Studio 2, which is the program that I use to develop Aikida. And the thing is, is when you import images, it just throws them all out of sequence. So you have to double check to make sure that your frames are all working in sequence. So let's run a build. Let's see how this looks. That's, that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. It doesn't seem jarring. It doesn't seem like, a, like it's, it's noticeably off in any way. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And I'm gonna slow it down a little bit here so we can really, really see what we're working with. And not too shabby, yeah, it's okay, it's not too bad. I, I wouldn't feel embarrassed about that one. Uh, so I might, uh, might make some minor adjustments to it and whatnot and uh, move a couple of frames around so that, uh, that, that he kicks his leg out right as he gets started within his run. But uh, other than that, I think this one's good to go. I think uh, some minor little animations you can see from Maka Pixel. Uh, he did a, an idle animation that's pretty rocking. I think it's like 30 frames. Adds just a little bit more life to the character. I think that's a good call. Um, we're gonna probably, I might hand this off to him to see if he can add a little bit of flow to that run to just bring the character to life. Just a, just a hair, just a little bit more. It's all in the details, you know. I like to put the time in where it matters and where it matters the most is of course gameplay. But if you can make your character really feel alive on screen, I think that that's, that's worth putting a little bit of extra time into. If you are interested in playing the Aikida game, you can go and pick it up right now. You can play the alpha. Uh, it's over there on my Gumroad channel. Uh, speaking of which, 
If you are a digital artist and you are interested in learning some of my uber secret tricks and tips and cheats, specifically one of the things that a lot of people had been telling me is that they feel like their art, it's just too slow to get progress on their artwork. So I just recently finished a Photoshop cheat box. It's called the legendary Photoshop cheat box. And it's because it's just that. It's basically the most down and dirty tricks that you can use to literally double your speed with painting. So dudes, thanks for stopping by. I hope that these animation tips were helpful to you. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more animation explorations, if we can dig a little deeper into animating in Photoshop. There are a lot of things like tweening that I didn't cover. It can be useful for making animated shorts or animating icons or animating elements of, of an indie game like rotating coins and things like that. And of course, if you have any questions or uh, comments, anything you'd like to know about the world of concept art, indie game development, or doing freelance, you can drop those in the comments field below any video. I read them all the time and every now and then I'll call one out and I'll do a nice big meaty conversation about it. And we'll just really dig deep into the most of the things that most people don't really like to talk about, like uh, the secrets of the industry. That's what I'm here for, baby. For everybody else, dudes, I want to catch y'all on and a child, baby. Oh, yeah. So smooth.